The most important part of any of this activity is being able to convert for yourself. Number one. Welcome to Monday Mornings with Michelle, the new business podcast. Whether you're kicking off your day or kickstarting your business, Michelle is going to kick your ass into next week with the essential fours. Strategy, systems, support, and state of mind. Now, welcome to center stage, Michelle Nedelec. Hey there, peeps. This is Michelle Nedelec, and I am super glad that you're here with us today because I have my most amazing guest, James. James, thank you so much for being here today. Yay. I'm giving myself a round of applause, Michelle. (laughs) (laughs) You love it when you don't have an audio audience. I mean, all these speakers just break down and go, what do I do? Nobody's cheering. How do I know? (laughs) Well, I I think what we're going to do, I think this is going to be my Christmas gift for you next year is going to be like an applause. It's going to be like (laughs) a dollar 99 audio recording. And that's all it's going to be. And, and from this point on for all your guests, it needs to be, yay. Love that. Love that. This is a serious podcast, right? This is a serious podcast. We need to be serious here. (laughs) Serious things. (laughs) So for those of you who don't know my buddy, James, give us a 5,000 foot view of kind of who you are and what you love to do. Yes, uh, I started Look Ahead Marketing all, about two years ago, actually, and it, it, it's changed since we started it. Essentially, uh, my jam is working with heart-centered entrepreneurs. So I work with a lot of healers. I work with a lot of uh, coaches like we have. And I'm not joking. There's a lot of like abundance coaches, mindset coaches. Uh, we have uh, a, a, all sorts of things like a, a, a what is it? An adult, ch- ch- an adult child of d- of divorce coach. Like, like we, I, I coach a bunch of people. I work with a bunch of people. <laughs> That's my jam. And I hope they get- can articulate what they do <laughs> we- a little better now. <laughs> Well, it's interesting. Anyway, so we help get them monetized. And one of the really interesting thing is, I just wrote an article for Choice Magazine, and one of the one of my arguments is that. Uh, this, you know, well, right now it's a pandemic. We all say we're going to go into an endemic, but I've, I've recorded press time is pandemic. And one of the things that my arguments is this has allowed the rise of the hyper niche coach. Absolutely. That's one of the things that, that, that I'm arguing is the fact that part of the reason why I'm so busy at the moment is because uh, people are coming out and all of a sudden we have like a blood sugar coach in my program. Mm-hmm. And that was not attainable several years ago. You have oh, to be a life coach not. and blood sugar level was one or a fitness coach and blood sugar level was one of the disciplines, right? Nowadays, because everybody's forced to be online, all of a sudden you're allowed to have, you know, you have this blood sugar coach that all of a sudden is, it's the perfect time to, to do that, right? You have the adult child of divorce coach, which is the perfect time to do that. You have a creativity coach, which again, wouldn't have, have been allowed to rise, you know, five years ago. Nowadays, it's perfect. Yeah, absolutely. And I was talking to somebody the other day about that. And it's because of the pandemic, it it fast forwarded that stage. But it was he compared it to like cars, right? Once upon a time, you bought a Ford and you you could have any color you wanted as long as it was black. (laughs) As long as it looked like this, still yours. And now you can buy a Ford in any shape, color, size, custom paint, label you know you can do whatever you want with it and people are niching into oh yeah we do you know custom labeling just for fords and 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 it's thing (laughs) so it's crazy right yeah don't you remember a few years ago we had something called a life coach do you remember that and (laughs) the life coach had to well they had to be disciplined in all things life fitness family dynamics goal setting mindset your diet like 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 it was kind of like this thing that like like go to a mechanic for a general tune-up right is is, or go go to right go to the mechanic like for for a paint job in black right nowadays like you said you can have stripes you can have decals you can have like uh you know it's a glass (laughs) sunroof it can be made of plastic like whatever it is and and that's kind of where we're at and i think it's friggin awesome I think it's amazing. And I also think it's amazing that you're here to help people to do that because I think it's one of the hardest things is trying to wrap your head around what do you want to be when you grow up and, and how do you articulate that to other people so that they can identify, yes, that's the thing that I want in my life. Well, this is one of the hardest things in the world, right? And, And let me, let me put it this way. So and I know it's because it's a podcast. You can't see this. I'm getting all serious. I'm leaning back in my chair and crossing my legs because we need to have a conversation about this. Um, that's uh, hunkered down. <laughs> so 
one of the hardest things in life, if you're an entrepreneur and you're in this space of trying to help people through your own experiences, being able to carve out a niche that is uniquely your own. Okay. So one of the fallacies we fall into is the fact that we feel like we need to label ourselves. For example, um, one of the things I do is I, you know, I, I tend to work with heart-centered coaches who have an amazing message and get them on the ladder. So it's a product that actually sells. We get them a few thousand dollars within 12 weeks. Like that, that's kind of my jam and, and, and I'm really good at it. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and part of the challenge is, is when I say that to people, they're like, Oh, so you do marketing. Like we tend to pe put people into boxes. Oh, so you do coaching. Oh, so you do life coaching. And, and, and one of the challenges is um, in the absence of, other people telling you, you're going to default to kind of being like, yeah, I'm a life coach. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a so-and-so coach based on preconceived notions because it's easier. And then we end up losing ourselves because we tend to think now we have competition. Oh, we'd better refresh the product against a competition. We better check out their price point. And all of a sudden, what made you really special no longer exists. And now you are in a sea of copycats because you forget the original reason why you joined in anyways. Yeah, oh, absolutely. So let's back up the bus a little bit and give people kind of the, how did you get into all of this? How did well, you? Well, I was one of those people. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was. It, it, so um, we've had a few companies here, okay? And, and one of them was actually a social media marketing company. Now, the honest to God truth is we weren't very good at it, okay? Don't tell anybody we said that, but, <laughs> but we, we weren't very <laughs> good at it. <laughs> and, and thankfully we sold it to somebody who was actually good at, good at it. <clears throat> and one of the things that, um, th that I came through was the first thing I, I did was, was that direct tangent. The direct tangent is, oh, I had a social media marketing company. And, and at the time I thought I was really good at it. And you know, what I'm gonna do now is teach people how to do social media marketing. Well, the, the thing's not easy. Michelle Nedelik, you, you know more than better than anybody else, the thing's not easy, right? And eventually it segued to um, getting your message out and being able to build a, a product around you with simple marketing things that you actually enjoy. That is how we got segued into it. And one of the, the cool things is it brought in very, very basic marketing techniques. More importantly, it brought it together all the failures I had experienced. Failures like having a copycat business, right? Failures like I am not enough. And, and, and by the way, mo like some of you who are listening to this are going to find that. And, and <laughs> even, even when you're able to, to sell, and, and I was just telling Michelle this, and I'm not doing this to show off, like Michelle's had, had, had giant days. I had my first $100,000 day. Uh, last year. And I still have, have these moments of like, is this really happening? I don't think we can get there. Right. So um, that, that is not, so all of these lessons, like those failures for mindset and psychology, I learned to get through. And, you know, I teach strategy and what I do. The reality is it's not just strategy. There's a lot of psychology involved in it because my course is more than just about getting on the ladder. It's more than monetization. It's actually standing up for something and creating a community to support you to do that and do it powerfully. Nice. I love that. And I think you have a superpower unto yourself of being able to figure out what that thing is that gets somebody super excited about uh, moving forward and positions them well in the market to be able to move on because as a coach, I find that that's one of the things that people fumble the most with. And I refer everybody that's in that position to you because you seem to have a system of being able to go just, oh, you just do this, this, and this. And it's like, oh, okay, awesome. So yeah, yeah, one, of, one of the hardest things, if you're, if you're starting to build your business is this, figuring out, and, and, and you and I both know Jay Facet, and he's really good at it, figuring out the promise or the transformation. What is the promise of your product? It's not a complicated question. What is the promise of your product? And the, the challenge is people don't actually know, mm -hmm. right? Like, 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 for example, let's take an example. And this is not that person, but let's say we're talking about blood sugar. Oh, well, it'll, it'll like, I'll give you diets. And like, you can access the, you can access the, the portal 24 seven. And I'm going to do group coaching. That is not a promise. That is the features of it. That is not the promise, right? What is the promise? Is the promise to lower by a certain percentage? Is it to have a healthy lifestyle so you don't have to worry about it? like what, like what is the actual promise? And uh, most of my people don't know what that is. And, and I'm, I'm not just talking my people, I'm talking a lot of coaches who start. And I, I'm going to talk about the industry for a second. A lot of coaches who start 
don't know what their promise or transformation is. And they're really busy trying to market something they don't have clarity on. Mm -hmm. Period. Like that, that is just categorically true. So they're building summits, they're building five day challenges, they're building webinars, they're trying to network, they're trying to sell. Well, what are you selling? If you don't know what you're selling, you're going to sell none of it. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the truth. Right. And so deciding whether or not it's a five day challenge or a webinar or a masterclass or whatever is again, features and you've got to back up the bus and go, what are you selling? Right. That's, that's exactly right, Michelle. And, and so sometimes that's more important to sit down and do the productive work that's difficult than it is uh, the, the actual busy work of mechanism. Because the reality is, is as well that the gravy train that you want to get on is after your initial conversion. We spend all this time and money trying to do the, the what, what we call what I call the initial conversion. That usually price point anywhere between 197 and 4997. Right. That, that's that's kind of where we spend all our time. The reality is once they know our genius and once they trust us, you are the right person to get them to the next level. That's when you charge them for the year of membership, or that's when you charge them for the year of mastermind, whatever it is. Nice. Love that. It, and I was just writing that down because that's one of the pain points that I have to get through to our clients is that it's not just the initial sale. And a lot of software just sells that initial sales. Like, oh yeah, we'll convert, we'll convert, we'll convert. It's like, yeah, but you're converting at $27. <laughs> that's not your money maker. That's, that's getting them in the front door. And then what do you do with them? And you need the systems to be able to set that up. So I love that. And um, I had a thought when we were talking about people, I also thought about, I, there's a couple of people I have to refer you to them because they're in their mind when I keep saying who well, you're selling this to and somehow some way their answer always becomes to the converted it's like I just want people that love me I just want people that already know what I do I want it's like, yeah yeah don't we all no, so, we, we all do right the millions of people who love you <laughs> right so how do you kind of wrap their head around the idea that it's not just the people that are already in love with you it's the people that have a pain that you have to get a hold of and like, how do you have that conversation with people or have you noticed yourself having that conversation? Yeah, just, could just be that, that, that one's an interesting one. That one, actually, I, I don't I don't have I haven't seen a lot of it. What I have seen a lot of it on my people is. Is anybody going to really buy this thing? Uh -huh. and, and I and I say, yes. And, and the way we're going to do this and, and here's here's a gold nugget for you. So if you're listening to this team, like. I don't know how to say this for, for the love of God test, like sell the product, then, then like in a test phase, then test to do it. And then once you know that both tests are successful, then build it out. A lot of people here, what they do is they tend to build, spend all their time and energy building the course that never sells. Mm -hmm. I've done that before. I've done that one too. <laughs> right. We we've all done something and, and I can speak from experience. Don't do that one. Okay. So one of the key planks of of the program because i have a lot of people who are like um it's one of two things right number one like what you said is like oh well so and so loves it and i'm like because just because your 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 girlfriend says that they love the program doesn't mean it's going to sell because did she buy and the answer is yes with your credit card okay or number two <laughs> right number two is oh is this thing going to sell and the only way to categorically answer that is, so so it's funny because I'm, I'm i'm telling two things number one i'm telling you if you think you have a bunch of raving fans, you do. Would but if you are that person that thinks everybody loves you, it's not that big. Okay, you just have to remember, like people think it's a great idea, and people buying are two completely separate things. All right, likes and you know, comments are wonderful, but money in the bank is the converted. It's a, it's a, it's another world, right? It, it, you and I both know, Michelle. Even people who are like, yeah, I'm definitely in. Okay, I think we got them. Definitely in. Only we say they're only in when what? When the money hits the account. And even then, if they're on a payment plan, you're like, ooh, are they still in the refund period? Right. <laughs> and it's not, it's not because are they renewing? Do we know if they're renewing? It's not because either of our products are bad. It's it's just because people get scared. People, people, are people. get scared because we're told money doesn't grow on trees. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and I know we're segueing here. So let me finish the previous thought. So this, you're this is doing awesome, baby. Keep it up. If you think, if you're not sure it's gonna sell, test it. The other thing is I guarantee you outside of your immediate family, you have raving fans, okay? Whether that's in your network, whether that's from a previous life, whatever. So when you put it out there and just, so for example, someone 
who I work with, who's really scared. She's like, she used to be a quality control scientist. That's what she did. And now she's all into spirituality and her jam is being able to like find the bridge between spirituality and science, talking to the corporate people who need this to find more joy in their life. Nice. Amazing, right? And she's like, is this thing going to sell? And I'm like, yes, it's going to sell, but you need to make the ask and you need to find out, right? And I, I don't, at press time, I, I don't know, how it's going, but I, I'm pretty sure she's going to find people because that is such a needed thing. And she is the right person to bring that to life. Right. Right. And it does take, <laughs> takes that certain conversation to that you can relate to people, yes. get them where they're at and then bring them into the journey and then change their vocabulary to something else. So yeah, it's hugely important. That's awesome. Let, let me, let me, let me, here's an interesting question for you or mm -hmm. audience. This is a rhetorical question because I'm asking it. No one's answering it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so audience talk to your stereo who is what is the, so so on all of this and, and i'm going to give you the, like five thousand foot view it's basically find your idea have a community to workshop the idea think it's okay and promote it and, and get it out to the world what is the hardest part in all of this the hardest part in all of this is standing up and saying this is what i stand for and and right now in my class, I have about a 60% monetization rate. That means 60% of the people who come to Superpowered Business Success, which is my signature program, they get money. Between $2,500 and we had one person make $28,000 is completely skewing the, the average. Okay? And, 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 and the truth is most people make about $2,500 to $11,000. It's somewhere, it's somewhere there in about that range. Nice. And, you know... The ones who are successful are the ones who stand up and say, this is what I'm doing. And I don't give an F anymore what anybody thinks. This is what I'm doing. And I'm going to talk about it. And I'm going to talk about it a lot. And I'm going to stand up here in, in all vulnerability and authenticity and talk about what I'm going to offer. And it's yeah. amazing what happens when people actually, actually hear. They're like, yeah, I think I'm in. Right? The people who don't, and this is not a slag point, the people who don't are the ones who are constantly getting ready to make the ask, but never do. I'm, I'm just, uh, the energy wasn't good this week. I'm just, I'm just, I, I'm just healing an old trauma. I, I, like, and, and look, we, we, these things are important to do. At some point in time, you must commit. At some point in time, you must commit to yourself and your family and, and, and make the ask. And that is, that is one of the biggest things, the biggest steps in entrepreneurship, right? Michelle, you and I have seen a lot of people come and go in this world. And, and one of the biggest things is the clarity around the product and being able to make the ask, mm -hmm. right? And then, and then the next thing is converting, but that's, that's a different, that's a different kettle of fish altogether, right? So, so, so kind of three big things, what you stand for, number one, going out to the world and, and actually saying what it is that you do, number two, and dumping all the old luggage that is that is very much like a, like a salient point when you dump all the old luggage of who you used to be and become the person you're meant to be. And, and then conversion, which again is, is, is more the Michelle thing. And, and I work with people on, a, on an invite only basis. Well, and, and I think it's hugely important and, and not to be dismissive that the conversion point is there is that there's so many little steps before that, that people get jumbled up into one. And it's like, no, I just need to go from start to conversion. I was like, no, you need those <laughs> points. Like those are incredibly important points. And it's almost irrelevant if you've done a complete 180 in your business and you're going from scientist to crystal healer, or if you're just kind of doing a slight pivot to, you know, I used to be a construction painter and now I'm doing residential painting. The exact same thing process has to go through again in order to identify who you are, how that message comes across, how you stand in that decision. And until you get that first conversion, you have to backtrack to step one, two, or three and figure out why that's not happening and it's not gonna happen. And so many people that I come across are like, oh yeah, I have a website. It's like, is it converting? No, we, we need to get it to converting. So we need to back up to those steps. And they're like, I run a multi-million dollar business. It's like, have you ever collected $1 off your website? No. Okay, then you're starting at ground zero. <laughs> like yep. your website is a totally different, whatever it is, it's a totally different beast than what you've been doing up until now. And you have to backtrack to those steps. Like it's, it's monumental to me. 
Yeah, it's 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 really interesting, right? So, and I'm gonna I'm gonna make an argument. I don't know if this is actually salient or not. What you know, I've been reading a book called uh, I just to get this right, War of Art, not Art of War, not not the not the Sun Tzu one with military. It's called uh, the War of Art, which is basically talking about resistance versus the person you're supposed to be. Okay, mm -hmm. and and the premise. I'm gonna summarize the book in like a line. Basically, it's the people who live their life the best they can are the people who get over themselves and the resistance that is offered on a daily basis. And you are always going to be fighting that resistance. Okay. So we've seen Mike this Rock. many times, right? We've seen this many times. <laughs> Number one is, is kind of like people who make the ask they've gotten over the resistance, right? You talk about converting in the five day challenges and the summits and the, and the webinars, that is a form of resistance. I know because I talk to these people as well. And then I say, okay, great. Have you worked on your presentation for conversion with your stack slide? No, no, I'm going to do that day before. You can't do that. The most important part of any of this is what? The most important part of any of this activity is being able to convert for yourself, number one. And if you can't do that, it is a way that you are keeping busy without being productive. Michelle's giving me jazz hands. It's, it's true. <laughs> the, the clouds part of the angels sang. Just go and rewind and hear that over and over and over again. Right. And, and you know, as well as I do, like, like even in my mastermind, I have to keep reminding people like they're doing like, I'm doing a summit. Great. How are you going to convert? Well, how are you going to monetize this? Oh, I haven't figured this out yet. Well, we need to have a plan to figure this out first before we go in there. Cause there's absolutely no reason to run a summit unless you make money on it. And, and yes, I sound like a corporate douche, right? And I'm not being because we have too many starting, starving entrepreneurs. Well, and there are a lot of work doing a summit. There, there has to be a reason why you're doing it, and it can't just be to put good out in the world. So let's address that one, that little beast, because I think especially in the heart-centered entrepreneurial world, they're like, oh, but people need what I do. And I come back to, <laughs> just because it's the way my brain works, I'm like, there's a Venn diagram. There's the value that you bring out into the world, and you need to have somebody that can appreciate and afford it, and uh, it has to be something that you love to do. And if those three things aren't in collaboration in that little sweet spot, then it's relevant. You can do as much volunteer work as you want to afterwards, but you have to pay your visa. Like yeah. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't care that you can't pay it or that you've done a lot of really good in the world. It just wants whatever that well, little total it, is. It's also world. a way we hide. It's also a way of uh, a, a resistance feature. The, the number of people who I've spoken to who do things for free because they need, feel they need to build confidence. So I, I have a, a chart and let me, let me try to draw this audibly. Okay. <laughs> Normally I have a whiteboard doing this, but <clears throat> if, if you have time, if you have time on the, on the X axis, so that's the horizontal axis and you have money that you want to charge over the Y axis, it basically looks like linear, like linearly going up to 45 degrees. Okay. Like it's your stock standard chart. Okay. And at some point in time, when we start a business, we're always like, I want to charge this much money at this time. Let's say it's $2,000 within three months. Okay. So you put an X somewhere on that, on that graph. The area underneath the line that you have, so you draw a triangle, right? The area that you, that you have under the line, that is confidence. And there's certain things that we need to build confidence with. Now, most people do what? Most people build confidence through, they think they're building confidence through like um, doing more training, getting more certifications, doing free stuff. That is not building confidence. That is a way you are wasting your time. Okay. And, and, and this is the truth. This is, this is the reason why that pilot is so important. So the pilot, picture this, the pilot on that line is like a third of the way up. And it is a stepping stone to getting you where you need to go. That is the, one of the best ways we can build confidence is actually do the product for paid money. I don't care if you charge $47. I don't care if you charge $97. I care that you charge something. It is so important that we charge something and deliver the product that we think we should because that is a stepping stone towards what you are going to do. Most people, make no mistake, never get to that time and money space that they want to because they don't have the right stepping stone. Very cool. I love that. And uh, so talk to me about, because I have clients that want to do that. And I'm like, you can do that. You can totally do that. You can totally charge 1 18th of what that is worth <laughs> in order to gain that confidence mm -hmm. to do that. But understand the people that you're going to attract 
into that are going to be 100% totally different group of people than the ones that will pay the full price of what it's worth 20x that. Yes. The, the answer is yes, categorically. In fact, so there's two different steps here. And this is something that's important to know. Okay. Michelle's absolutely right. The, the, the people who pay full bore are going to be different from the people who pay the, the freebie cheapies. Okay. The freebie cheapies are way the hell better than the people who you don't charge at all. Am I, am I abundantly clear here? So, so one of the things you're doing by charging is clearing the space. And anybody who has done this, but whether it's a relationship, whether it's friends, right? Have you ever noticed that when you when you move into a new home and you're like, oh my God, like look at the amount of space, that, that, that space gets consumed in what, a few months, right? So, so when we have a container, it naturally fills. Mm -hmm. And so when you eliminate the people who you are, who are you working with for free, that will naturally fill with something paid. Then those people who get the discount will, will, will you know, either upsell and pay real money or they, they naturally like bleed off, which is fine. And then you get people who actually pay the full amount. We can't do this without taking big steps though. We can't do this without leaving some people behind. And most people want to build by aggregation. We need to build by subtraction. And that was the first time I've ever said that. And that's actually kind of cool. Okay. That's so awesome. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. absolutely. Concur. In, in, in this case, the point is not to get people to pay you. Well, it is. Okay. The, the point is to get people to pay you, not for the bank account. Why? Because you need to change as a person and understand you can and need to charge money for this. That is the single biggest thing. So I'm working with somebody currently who, um, so my product is $2,000 product. And um, I'm working with someone who's homeless. And he's like, I, I could find the money. I'm like, I'm not going to charge you that amount. Absolutely. That's ridiculous. I'm not doing that. I am, however, going to charge you a small sum because you need to be vested in this just as I am. We need to do this together. Right? And that's what you need to do, my friend, sometimes. Nice. Love that. And love creating the context of it. So it's, it's being patient with yourself and understanding that it's more important that you create the context than it is that you're finding the right people that you're going to end up with in the long run because you're not going to end up with them until you get to them anyway. So just be patient with them. Yep. It, it's going to, and, and by the way, you know, one of my favorite expressions these days as an entrepreneur is be like Jello. What does that mean? Well, most people <laughs> try to build with stone and rebar and concrete according to the building plan. When people, when you start in business, people are like, what's your target market? And most people answer something like this. My target market is between 42 and a half years old and 57 and three quarters years old, <laughs> male who have never smoked. And you're kind of like, whoa. And, and, and the reality is that when you first start your beta, this is the beautiful thing about pilot again, is that, is that you may find that is not actually your target market. And you need to be okay with that, right? Yep. A lot of people who I work with are like, they're not my target market. Should I let them in? I'm like, yes, absolutely let them in. <laughs> are they going to pay you? Then let them in, okay? And figure out if it's going to work. And then a, a magical things happens, okay? A magical thing happens. You figure out exactly who you're going to work with more than just demographics, more in terms of psychographics and just people who you like, okay? Number one. And, and number two, you tend to shift the product according to create more powerful change and you charge more and those people are more willing to pay for it. But unless you start somewhere, you don't know what that is. Exactly. The way I visualize that for people is you're going to start with something that's like blue. I think everybody should be blue and this is all going to be blue and you get a bunch of people in your pilot program and then they start giving you feedback and it's like, well, you know, I'd really like a little bit more red in this and, you know, and that starts to turn a little purplish. And then when you start to get the right people and then eventually it becomes red, you're yep. like, oh, okay, I'm selling red product. That's totally cool. That's okay. But you don't get to that red until you start with whatever it is that you got going on and you get the feedback and you get the yeah, you don't understand what you're actually building. This is the funny thing, right? This is the funny thing. We don't actually understand what we're building until we're kind of knee deep in it. So <laughs> sometimes we just got to start. And the people who you're doing, who you're coaching for free or, or working with for free, don't like, they aren't the ones to help guide the product. Please, for the love of God, don't listen to them. Okay. Like, like get people who are willing to actually commit, even if it's just a few dollars, it doesn't matter. Like, $97 is great if you're an online coach, 10 weeks, 12 weeks, deliver your heart out, charge them $97, charge them $197. I don't care. I care that they pay something and they're there every week. 
Nice. I love that. So give us an example of one of your Cinderella stories. We had, um, one of the things I work with is words. I work around the words. It's one of the first few weeks. So we talk about, you know, a, a superpower, you can call it a gift. You could call it, call it, you know, being able to work with, uh, you know, being able to figure out what it is you do differently and building a business around that, that actually friggin' works. Okay. That's, that's one of the things that we do where, where I come from. We had, and, and both you and I both know her and her name is Paige Stevenson. And she would, you know, she would, and she came into the program and for months she had put zeros up zero, 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 zero. In many ways, superpower business success was her last, her last kick of the can before being forced back into the, into the workforce. Right. And so one of the things that I realized right away is, is Paige it, and Michelle, you and I both know her. She's, she's uplifting. We love she's Paige. Paige is awesome. She's, she's funny. She's characterful. And, and, and you, and you spoke to her and then, um, and you're like, Paige, what do you do? And she's like, oh, I have, I have this thing down. She's like, I have this old marketing coach. And she's like, I work with depressed loved ones who uh, don't love life and need to find joy. And I'm like, wow, that is really heavy. <laughs> and, and she's like, well, I can't really say depressed because of them. Anyways, it's not like it was this thing that, that just didn't realize the person that she was didn't make sense together with the words that she used, Right. And so one of the things that we did was we worked around her, her superpower, we figured it out of upliftment. Anybody who speaks to Paige, it feels better afterwards, right? Yes. And so her new word was something, and, I, and I'm paraphrasing here because I don't have it in front of me, but it's something like, I work with people to move them to great joy and happiness. We find clarity in life, we find love and family, we find love and work, we find life and everyday things, like all the, all the amazing things. And I kid you not, two weeks after finding that, she put on something, she made $6,000, $6,000 after putting like months of zero on because she made this simple change. Nice. Right. Because she actually led with and it's something like, I find I work with the angels and, and she actually brings that up in the front. And, and I love that because she's like, but James, I'm, I'm worried about people judging me. And I'm like, well, the people are going to judge you anyways, whether you bring it up early or bring it up late. So you might as well bring it up early and you might as well stand in your power. And those people who don't resonate with that, that's okay but you get the people who do. And that's why she's so good at what she does because she puts it up front. People are like, that sounds really cool. Tell me more. Or they're like, eh, it's not really for me. That's okay. Fair enough. That's okay. Nice. Right? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Want that parallel because it's, it doesn't make sense to bring a whole bunch of people in the front door that aren't going <laughs> to want to be there. Cause it as soon as yeah, everybody sits so down, scared. they take up all the seats, they get up and they walk away. And now you got a bunch of empty seats. It's like, well, just don't come in. <laughs> well, it, it's kind of like, okay, here's a little trick for you. If you're doing webinars or workshops to, to convert, <laughs> this is my super, super amazing trick. Just drop the price early. Just, just drop it early. Uh, don't like, like, don't hide it. You're, it. It doesn't like, like all of a sudden there's he so much. Mean drop it down. He means give it to them. Show them. Oh, what yeah. What I mean, like, like, yeah, <laughs> drop, like, like, don't, don't, <laughs> don't, don't discount. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying in the beginning, in the first five minutes, be like, look, I'm going to make an invite. It's a $2,000 invite. I think some of you are going to be great for this. Boom. It's done. You're done. They know what it's about. They know how much, it, and then their, their wheels start turning and start evaluating your content and if you can help them. Anyways, that's, so, so that's-, that's I love and, that, love that. You know, one of the things I want to talk about Paige for a second as well, the person who got $6,000 after zeros across the board, is she changed as a person too, right? She's not desperate anymore. You know, one of the, one of the challenges that we have, and I always say build a business around you, and run a beta. Those are like my two lessons of this podcast, right? Build a business around you. What she was trying to do was what too many people do in the industry, which is take somebody's program and follow it slavishly to the letter, finding out it doesn't work. Why? Because there's none of you involved there. There's none of you, right? A lot of people are like, oh, I'm going to take a, a, a $35,000 program and I'm going to, you know, they say this week I have to do a bunch of, of Facebook posts. Well, you, Michelle, you and I have, have seen it. The, the, the long and self-indulgent Facebook posts about like yourself and how amazing you are. And, and, and you and I could kind of turn off by it. And it, it, it stopped working. It stopped working months ago. Yet people are still attracted to it. So it's another way we hide, right? There you go. Absolutely. Nice. So I'm going to ask you, what are some of the stumbling blocks that somebody might be having right now? And they're thinking, oh my God, James, I need you so badly. And I'm going to take your answer on that. And I'm going to qualify because if you 
if you're listening to this and you fall into a couple of categories that I think you need to talk to James, then listen to me because I'm right. You need to talk to James. So what are they in your opinion? All right. So one of them is uh, finding clarity around what you do. Okay. So if you're having trouble explaining it, <laughs> that's usually a sure sign that, that, that you need me. Okay. Number two, you've been doing it for a few months or a few years and you're getting zero monetization. Um, right. That's, that's a big one. Another one is you are really busy doing the things that everybody else does, but you're not getting any traction. I E you're planning summits, you're planning five day challenges, um, or you're changing like the wind, you're changing products like the wind. You're, you're like, Oh, I think I'll do this. No, I think I'll do this. Oh, I think I'm missing the certification. Those are great things. Or maybe you just, are a little bit insecure and a little bit scared about what's happening. And that's okay too. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a sign that you're on to great things. You also need a community to lift you up. You must find somebody, a community, whether it's me, whether it's my community, I'd love to do it, whether it's Michelle, reach out to her, right? To say, look, you, you got to do this. This is what we're going to do on January 17th or whatever date it is. You're going to say, this is what I stand for. This is the product and put it out to the world. Because the easier thing to do, like I said, is hide and say, and pretend you're building confidence. Is that is that area under the graph again, trying to build confidence when in fact you're not. You are making excuses for, and you are, and 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 this is this is the this is the challenge, right? Is that if you don't bring the magic into the world, no one sees it, including yourself. The people you're meant to work with don't see it. Your family doesn't see it. And, and make no mistake, people will support you after you're successful. It's one of the hardest things I'm going to tell you in life. Okay. So <laughs> you'd better start clapping for yourself because in entrepreneurship, that's the only person that's going to clap for you until you are successful. Right. It's interesting, Michelle. And, and, and I think you, you get this and, and some of you are in the middle of this. So if you are in the middle of this, just keep going. Okay. The interesting thing is when you first start, people are like, that's interesting. And then it gets difficult and nobody's there. That's the reason why you need a community, by the way. Okay. And now people are coming out and they're like, well, one of the things is you had a summit with Brett Wilson. And when I put my name up there, I got so much mileage and people were like, oh my God, James, how's this going? Like, we should talk soon. Well, you should have nice. talked to me. You should have talked to me a year ago when I was more powerful becoming the person that I am now. True that. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. I absolutely love and endure everything you say. Agree wholeheartedly. So peeps, if you miss that, it's irrelevant whether you're brand spanking new at something and you're like, oh, I've never done this before in my life. I, I totally need to have James because I got to figure out how to articulate this. Or if you've been doing something like, say you're a master plumber and you've been doing it for decades, you're awesome at it, but now you're going to go and speak about it. Technically, you're starting at zero again, because if you haven't made money in that modality, then you're starting over again. And that I think is one of the hardest things to understand is if you haven't made money in that particular modality, you're starting over again, and you need to learn how to articulate that. The faster you can get through that learning curve, the better. Yeah, awesome. and it, yep. everything you do takes courage, right? That's one of those, one of those weird entrepreneur things is every every single time you you show up, you need courage, right? So Look, I, Michelle, I appreciate having having me on. Can I can I give a gift to the to the to the listeners? Would that be okay? I think we can allow you to that. Uh, so, because what I was going to ask you was, I know that our listeners are going to want more from you. So, how do they begin their journey with you? I'm gonna I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give Michelle a link, and you can put it in the show notes. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to let the listeners know what's happening right now. I'm we're, we're recording this. And at press time, there was a cat who was harassing poor Michelle. <laughs> poor Michelle has, has she really, really wants table. some love and affection. It's like, not now, not now, not now. And All the right. sun's coming through. I got everything. There, there you on. go. So I'm going to give Michelle a link to share. And, and right now, and it's going to be uh, every, every so often we have, uh, and it's not given to everybody, uh, VIP freebies. Okay. So for Ooh. example, there's a workshop I'm running currently at press time now because this is a podcast that lives forever. It may not be live, but right now I'm doing what's called a puzzle pieces workshop. So uh, Michelle's going to have the link and because it's a secret link. And what we're doing here is we're getting exactly what we talked about. We're, we're figuring out how to wrap the product around your best gift 
We're figuring out how to monetize it. We're figuring out the marketing channels that are actually going to work for you. And we're figuring out how to run the darn pilot and what it's going to be about. Those are the three things you're going to take out from it, and which is an amazing gift. Okay. I normally charge 197 which is actually something I've actually charged before for this thing. I'm going to give it to you for free. If you follow the link, that is a, that is a great gift. And this is my other promise is there's always, even if that's not currently going on, there's always going to be something there that is worth value that we actually charge for uh, because Michelle's awesome. And you're awesome for listening to this. Nice. Thank you so much for that. I love it. So yes, go and check out puzzle pieces workshop. Yes. Awesome. Right now it's the puzzle product puzzle pieces workshop. And uh, team, I'm going to give you 10 points if you come up with a new name because I want to change the name of it. <laughs> That's awesome. So the main name may be changed, but it's still yours for free no matter what well, you I, get. I, I think it's Love funny because it. I, here I am finding great names for everybody else. But when it comes to your own thing, it's so difficult. And, and <laughs> right? you know this as well as I do, Michelle. <laughs> oh, absolutely. We Somehow we get emotionally involved in our own stuff. I don't know how right. that happens. Yeah. Right. Awesome. So I thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. But before I let you go, I have to know at what point in life did you know that you were a special kind of crazy enough to think that you could become an entrepreneur? When I was working in corporate and I thought I knew everything. Really? Tell me more. And oh, this is, it, it, I, I wish it was a better story than it is. It's, <laughs> it's not. It was one of those things where, um, You know, I wanted to do a certain thing. The corporation wanted to do a certain, it was actually not for profit. The not for profit wanted to do a certain thing. I saw big things they say is too risky. Mm -hmm. And that's one of those times when I was like, I'm just going to go on my own. And I thought, Michelle Nedelec, I thought I was going to make $150,000 in the first year, not lose 70,000 in the first year. So, <laughs> so there you go, right? One of the, well, this is, this is something that I, I, I want you to hear because it, I'm going to be doing this for, for many years. And the way that I know I'm on the right path is that all the failures and all the lessons and everything that I've done in the past serendipitously come together for this perfect moment. And that's what we're living in right now. Nice. I love that. And the reason I want to know about that story about the entrepreneurs and why I ask everybody about it is because it happens in different ways for everybody. And sometimes it is that like, God, why are these people making so much money off me? I could totally do this better than them. I'm clearly smarter than them. I clearly know how to get stuff done better than them. Like I should go on my own. And it's that spark, that moment that intrigues me because it hits different people in different ways. But it, to me, it's that calling. It's I can be something more. I can do something more with my life. I could express myself in a much more powerful way if I went and did this thing. And sometimes we fall flat in our face and sometimes it's, you were going hundred miles an hour and we fall off the bike and we get <laughs> skin marks from the top to the bottom. It's like, it, it's not a pretty venture the first time. Yeah. So it's uh, not necessarily, sometimes it's a beautiful thing, but to me, I want to know why people do the thing. Like, why do you want to learn how to ride a bike? What when God's green earth would make you decide, Hey, there's this thing that is completely and totally unstable. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to park my butt on it and go as fast as I can. <laughs> it's like, no, why would you do that? That, that, is, that is true. Here, here, here's an interesting theory. Okay. And, 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 and I, I know you're, you're wrapping this soon, but I want to, I want to put this out there anyway, because I'm, I'm intrigued by this. entrepreneurship the, the number one thing that increases business success is what improving the business owner whether it's mastermind whether it's trainings whether it, whatever it is right like mindset help hypno help like all all the things okay education reading books things like that and so we we always look at you know one of the things that's really interesting is you know family businesses where they leave it to children and things like that and, and i almost wonder if we have such a high failure rate in that because the person who built the business to where it is fundamentally had to go through the failures to get it to where it was. So they understand the learnings and understand what it takes. Whereas the, the family coming in, they've never understood failure. They don't understand how to deal with setbacks and they don't have the belief that comes in the, and, and does that make sense, Michelle? And I, I don't know oh, where that theory lies, but, but I'm within my mind. Thousand one percent. Yes. And I, I, not only do I truly believe that I wrote a book on it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's, it's the understanding of just because you're successful in this position, 
doesn't mean you're going to be successful as an entrepreneur because the rules of the game change and nobody really explains the rules in the next level and why. Well, if what I did to climb the corporate ladder, I was so successful at, I like I started in a company and I became the CEO six months later. <laughs> like, why can't I start my own business? And it's because the rules of the game are totally different. We need to understand that. Yeah. yeah. There you go. There you go. That's my new theorem. I'm going to write a book on it. You've inspired me. There you go. Nice. <laughs> Awesome. So thank you again so much for your time. I know how valuable it is. I appreciate it immensely. Any last words for our peeps? Listen to everything Michelle says. <laughs> Reversely. <laughs> Every and, podcast. Uh, look, I, I appreciate being on here. I think the, the thing, I, I have these stickers made up and I'm happy to send you one, Michelle. And, and they're, they're awesome. So the stickers say something like this. They're not something like this. They, they have it. They say this. See the magic others see in you. So the truth that we have raving fans, whether it's our family, whether it's our, our fans, whatever it is, and, and as entrepreneurs, we tend to run from one thing to another, focusing on what is broken, it's focusing on what we need to fix. The honest to God truth is we, to be successful, we need to be the people that others see in us, the, the most powerful, beautiful person that you can be, and you can be it. So I want you to see that. And, and that's what I'm going to leave with. Nice. I love that. Peeps, this is Michelle Nedelec. Thank you for being here with us today. Be sure to subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast app so that I can help you scale your business. I love having you here. Thank you for listening to our show. I'm all about being a resource center for entrepreneurs to give them the information and the support that they need to make it in business. As such, the notes for this show can be found at our website at awarenessstrategies.com slash blog. Be sure to subscribe, give us a rating, I like five stars personally, and share with your friends.